Well, I'm going to have to get used to this. Um, usually I have a countdown on my camera to before I start recording. This one just goes straight on. Hey, you hit the button, go right ahead. Um, it's because I got an all new laptop now. So I got a much more powerful one. And um, see, so far it's working great for me. Uh, but uh, yeah, this one video is a little, was a little delayed because um, I recently got myself a, a seasonal job at the lo local baseball team and I was just dead tired. I could not get the strength of me to record a video. But right here I am and I got uh, plenty to talk about here. Uh, first thing I want to, to go into is um, with my upcoming um, con uh, BLFC. Now, yes, several things. First off, um, I did apply to, uh, to DJ there, and um, I will not be in the lineup, but that was pretty much to be expected from me. But I did look at some stuff of what they look at, and I did not know about this one detail. Uh, they take into account many aspects with each DJ application and some considerations include but are not limited to and this is the one that I did not know about that you have played in the past two years and are required to have a year off that detail I did not know about um, I have played two years ago and last year would have been my year off so the only, I mean, they had, like I said, they had me before. The only thing I can think is that, again, they just didn't have enough room. They had um, 80, over 80 applications uh, for just 20 slots. So I only had a 25% chance of getting in anyway. So so the odds were against me. So, so yeah, they were more likely trying to get uh, people that have never played at the con before yeah, as they aim to do before they go through the whole list again so so that was too much to be expected I, I don't really feel bad about that but but I will be at BLFC and if you've been on my Twitter page I've been teasing a new fursuit that will be coming out and I will debut this suit um, uh, most likely Friday because um, I my plane gets in uh, during the night I originally was going to was going to be there during the afternoon, um, but um, work got in the way and I have to be somewhere in the morning, so I had to push my flight back. Um, so I will be arriving Thursday night. Um, but I will be talking about the um, I'll be talking about the events in the next video. Of uh, with some uh, other things going on. Um, now, I have not played Pokemon in over 15 years. Um, I've played Pokemon Go the past couple of years, but I don't, but that's not one of the core games. But after over 15 years, I finally gave in. Uh, I got Pokemon Ultra Moon and I got myself a 3DS system and a lot of the things have changed since I last played the game. I've not played a Pokemon game since Gen 2. Um, so far, um, so far in this one, no badges this time. Instead, it's Z-Crystals, and I already have four. And I only bought this yesterday. So, so, so far I'm enjoying it. Um, um, I'm hoping to make big progress with this game, but this was, this is going to take a while to complete. Um, at least the main storyline, anyway. Trying to catch all the Pokemon in the game, now that is a big challenge. All right, some news that we're um, going to get into here. There's this BBC news article about extreme dog grooming. Now, this this is uh, where people just take grooming their pets to to the beyond limits. I'm looking at several photos and they just look ridiculous. There's a poodle on on the top and this poodle is like covered in different colors, pink, blue, orange, yellow, all throughout its fur. It just looks ridiculous. 
I, I cannot see myself doing that. That's just too much. I get that you want to show love for your pet, but that is just beyond crazy. Um, there's these dog spas um, around doing this, and they say that their treatments are, quote, harmless fun as long as the pet was happy and freely compliant. Uh, they uh, they offer what is called creative grooming. Uh, this location that they were talking to is uh, in Essex. Um, they said it was um, uh, far more concerning that most dogs were not groomed enough, causing infections, overgrown nails, and severe matting. That's just people that uh, don't, don't take enough care doesn't mean you have to go overboard with it. Um, and in fact, uh, a spokesman for the RSPCA said the extreme pampering of pets sends out an extremely worrying message that they could be viewed as novelty accessories rather than intelligent sentient animals. And they strongly advise against dyes even if it's marketed as pet friendly um, and a spokesman from the kennel club said if extreme pampering becomes more normalized and there's a risk the animals will start become will we start being seen as accessories which will lead to their welfare being jeopardized so pretty much what it's saying is that um, do take care of your pets but don't go overboard with it treat them like they're your own family member Uh, let's see. This this article um very interesting uh, coming in, uh, out of um sing um the out of Japan. Uh, and you're likely to find a um a sweet potato cart um on the streets that is being sold by someone in a cat uh, fur suit or what looks like a fur suit. Um, now the the snack that that he's selling is called a uh, yakimo, which is a popular Jap Japanese snack that is usually sold during the autumn and winter seasons. Um, now in this is in the uh, Kura, um, the Kurayoshi city in uh, the Tatori prefecture. Uh, there is a seller who is fam famous for running the business in a um, in a suit. Uh, he's known as um, uh, Ikaneko Yamada, um, and this thing is very popular among children. And this uh, now the prices that he sells is uh, two hundred yen, or uh, for a small one, or two American dollars. Or uh, 300 yen or three dollars for a medium sized sweet potato, and 400 yen or about four American dollars for a large one. And I can, I saw um, many pictures and some video. This guy, this guy is dedicated, he even he would cook some while in the suit. So, um, I, I do recommend checking it out. And if you're uh, in the area uh, during the, the cold season. Uh, do try to keep an eye out for him. I, I really would like to see this guy. Now there's um, been some stories coming around. Uh, this one is very weird. Um, this um, goes to one such case with a man called Robert uh, Kagashal, uh, who is playing with his dogs outside um, of his young town house around noon on Friday now he saw a raccoon and he and he got his dogs inside the house now the um, now the animals were looking at each other through the window but there was something odd about this raccoon since it was uh, out during the day um, see when when Robert uh, uh, left his garage to try to get the raccoon away the the raccoon had stood up on its hind feet and showed his um, his teeth and his gums and saliva was dripping from its mouth then it collapses 
like it was in a coma. And then it awakes again, walked around for a bit, and got back up on his hind legs again. Or something like this, um, these stories are calling them zombie raccoons. Just because of how they act. So people are right, the zombie apocalypse is coming, but it's not with, with, with humans, it's with raccoons. And I've heard of zombie squirrels. Um, but in actuality, they're not actually zombies. Yeah, this, they just act like them. And the, they were given that name because the behavior is so unsettling. And uh, the Ohio Department of Natural Resources had said that they're likely infected with a disease called distemper. The, um, the viral, sometimes fatal disease uh, typically infects unvaccinated domestic dogs, but it can also infect foxes, coyotes, and skunks. Um, and don't worry, this disease does not affect humans. And distemper uh, can cause brain damage, which uh, is likely what caused this raccoon to be uh, to have this behavior that it was showing. It also causes respiratory disease, seizures, immobility, and death. So the best thing to do is to get your pets vaccinated. Um, And just keep in mind that among ra raccoons that an outbreak uh, of the disease is more likely to occur in a large or concentrated population. And this runs in cycles of about five to seven years. All right, enough of the grim stuff. Let's talk movies. We have uh, a movie uh, called The Voyage of Dr. Doolittle. And sorry, Eddie Murphy is not in this one. Instead, uh, Dr. Doolittle is going to be played by Robert Downey Jr. And in fact, they have announced the whole cast of who is playing the animals. Uh, they have Emma Thompson um, playing uh, Polynesia, who is a parrot. Um, let's see. Anyone that I recognize in here? Uh, Selena Gomez is playing Betsy, who is a giraffe. And this one, <laughs> we have a polar bear called Yoshi, who is played by John Cena! <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Uh, but yes, John Cena is in this movie. Now, um, the, uh, the past movies of Dr. Doolittle, um, did not get much success with critics. Um, the original one back in 1967 was was an infamous box office flop and was bashed by critics, which featured a notoriously disastrous um, um, film film shoot. And but it still somehow managed to get nominated for the Best Picture at the Oscars. And, has, and it has the reputation of being one of the worst, if not the worst, movie ever made while being nominated. Um, and uh, what, what movies were they up against? Uh, they were up against... Um, Sound of Music, My Fair Lady. Uh, let's see. And of course, let's not forget the 1998 movie with Eddie Murphy. And um, this one, was, that one brought in more at the box office, but still wasn't a, a big hit. And, and the other problem is that it had hardly had anything to do with the books from Hugh Lofting and it only brought in the basic premise of of a, what Dr. Doolittle was so so now how is this going to 
how is this movie going to work with the voyage of Dr. Doolittle? They need to pay uh, some respect to the source material, uh, unlike what the 1998 version uh, did. So if they're going to expect this to have some success, they need to take more elements out of the book. Uh, let's see, is there anything else I need to talk about? Uh, doesn't look like it. This is going to be uh, relatively short. Okay, so, you know, like I said, uh, next video I'll talk about uh, more on BLFC and I'll have info on that, as well as some more previews of the suit that's going to be coming up. But till then, th uh, this dragon's mouth is now closing. <laughs>